Tommy, I want to read something uh, that you told us not too long ago. Um, as we are sitting here on News Nation now talking to Officer Tommy Norman, an Arkansas police officer who really has an opinion, a thought process on community policing. Tommy, you told me this years ago when we worked together in Little Rock. You said you have to be a friend. You have to know people's story and be ingrained in the community that you serve. Stay off the main streets and go into the neighborhoods. Get out of the car, walk around, sit on some porches, meet people, let them know you're on a first name basis. It is not just about you talking the talk right now or getting a bunch of followers on social media. Tommy Norman, you are clearly in this for the long haul. You do want to make a difference. I do. Um, to me, if you're not making a difference, then you know, you're really not fulfilling your meaning here on earth uh, because so many people out there, they need a friend, uh, whether it's a child, whether it's a, a senior citizen, uh, you know, someone maybe that has a disability where they've been forgotten about and they don't have a voice, they don't have a platform. People like that are people that I've always been gravitated to since I was a kid. And, you know, that badge and that uniform, it's powerful. But I can tell you something, Aaron, that's even more powerful than that, and that's your heart. And we all have a heart. We all have an opportunity to go out and make a difference. And to me, there's no excuses because in every community across the United States, there's people that, that need assistance. There's people that need to know what a friend is. And, you know, I'm happy to be here in Arkansas doing my part. So we kind of first started to know about Officer Tommy Norman when you were dancing with kids, whether it was the whip and nay nay or you were hitting the quan or whatever that may have been. You decided to get out of your police car, as you said in that quote, and you wanted to be a friend to those kids. You wanted to show them that there was more behind the badge. Talk about that dance a little bit. <laughs> I don't know if you would call it dancer for me. I'm pretty stiff in the hips, but it's the fact that whether I could dance or not, the kids, uh, people in the community saw that at least I was putting some type of effort into getting out and engaging with kids, whether it was dancing, playing basketball. Um, but what that leads to, Aaron, is it leads to you becoming family. So then you get invited to birthday parties. You get invited to graduations. You get invited to weddings, um, hospital visits. Um, you, you, you're invited to all these, these special events by people in the community and those events that I showed up at, I wasn't wearing a uniform because ultimately at the end of the day, I want people to know me as Tommy and not just Officer Norman. And so, you know, when you become a family member, you're going to be at different family functions and people will stop calling you Officer Norman. They'll start calling you Tommy because, as you said earlier, you're on a first name basis and they trust you that much. Tommy, talk about going further than just dancing with kids and playing basketball with kids. You are giving to kids. You, you, you've opened your, the back of your patrol car and had food for them and toys for them. And then there's this, there's this senior citizen element where you have really become a friend of some of those in your community that aren't able to get outside their home. Right. Uh, a lot of times you, you have to come to people in the community. They can't come to you. Some people aren't able to, to leave their home. Some people... Uh, the smile that you give them or the handshake or the hug, that's the only interaction uh, and emotional connection they may receive all week uh, or for all months for that matter. And so, you know, giving shouldn't be taken lightly. Um, the impact that you could ultimately have in a community should be taken very serious. And it's not going to happen overnight. You know, you, for, for people to, 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 to trust you and respect you, you can't just come out once or twice. You have to come out the next week, the next month, the next year and keep showing your face. And I've been a public servant here in, in Arkansas for over 22 years now. Um, but, you know, I can honestly say that my heart, um, it beats really, really loud for the community. Uh, and it's much more powerful than my badge. If you're just now joining us here on News Nation Now, I am Aaron Nolan, joined by Officer Tommy Norman. He's a police officer in Arkansas that has a million followers on Instagram. And you, you like that social following. You love to do those Instagrams, Tommy. I know you. I know you well. But again, it's that heartbeat for the kiddos, for the community that's more important. And, and I want to get into that a little bit right now, Tommy, as, as we look at police in America, there, it, it's a hot button issue. 
and in your community, where do you see that policing as far as how people perceive you? Uh, you know, I can speak for police officers all across the state of Arkansas. You know, we have a positive reputation and we really do. Um, it's not going to take one officer, it's going to take a group of officers and not just in one city, but cities across the state. Um, you know, you mentioned my followers having a million followers, but if I'm not making a difference in the community, if people don't love me, then the followers, they, they don't matter. And so, but, you know, throughout Little Rock, the metro areas and, and beyond different corners of the state, police officers are doing a great, great job. They're doing a lot of work that we may not see on TV or on social media, but I know a lot of police officers in this state and they're doing great work. I want to ask you how difficult your job can be. Uh, the video on your screen right now, a lot of it is you, you getting to have fun, but I know the job well enough to know that it's not all toys and it's not all playing. You've got a tough job as well. You can imagine making friends, becoming really close friends with a group of kids uh, in a certain household. And then imagine being called to that house and you have to take mom or dad to jail. So you develop this relationship with these group of kids. They love you. You're, you're somewhat of a superhero. But then these same kids see you pulling out your handcuffs and arresting mom, dad, someone in her family. And so they become really, really confused. Why is this police officer that's told us that he loved us and he cares for us taking someone that we love and our family to jail? And that's you know, it's something that, you know, as a police officer, you will have to take those steps at times. And it, it's and sometimes I've experienced that relationship is somewhat shattered and you have to reestablish it. And you have to explain to the family and the kids afterwards that, hey, I am your friend, but I also have a job that I have, have to do. We're talking with Officer Tommy Norman from Arkansas. He's a police officer there who believes in, in and I think you may not have coined this phrase, Tommy, but the, the term community policing. And it's this idea of making a police officer more than just someone who is uh, abiding by the law and making sure everyone else abides by the law, but getting in the community and using policing as a community outreach. At what point in your career did you realize that your badge could be more powerful than just someone with handcuffs and issuing tickets? It's a story that I've told a lot. Um, I was in my first five years of being a police officer and a murder suspect in Little Rock, which is not the city that I work in. It's across the river. Um, this gentleman had a, a warrant for his arrest for murder and he reached out to me, never even met me before. So I go over um he's arrested but before he's taken away i asked the gentleman why me and he said that word on the street was that there was a police officer in a neighboring city that he could surrender to with dignity and respect and that moment in time right there if i ever needed any kind of confirmation that what i was doing as far as community policing worked that that was the answer this man had been hiding from the police in little rock um he was scared and he asked another gentleman on a homeless gentleman on the street, I'm ready to turn myself in. And this man says, call officer Norman. So my reputation um, solved a murder. That's something special, Tommy Norman, uh, as we wrap up. And I know it's been a, a difficult last couple of weeks for you. You've lost some of those friends that you have made on the streets uh, there in Arkansas. What are you thankful for as we uh, as we're here on the holiday week of Thanksgiving? I'm thankful for my family, um, my mom, my dad, my siblings, my wife. Uh, but I'm also thankful for this community here in central Arkansas. Um, and they're also family. So, you know, ultimately at the end of the day, I have hundreds and hundreds of family members, whether it's a brother, a sister, a grandma or grandpa. There's a lot of them out there. And I'm thankful for the impact that I've made. The, I'm thankful for the role I've played in the community and kind of being a piece of that puzzle that it takes to bring communities together. Well, I want to thank you. I've told you this before, you and I are friends, but I want to say thank you for what you're doing in the community, for making an impact. If you had a message for any police officer across America to adopt your idea of policing, what would that message be? 
Well, first, and I've said this many times in the past, so your badge should have a heartbeat and not an ego. But if you're not doing this now, get out of your cars, uh, talk to people, interact with people. I realize now with, with the COVID-19, you have to be cautious, but you can still do that from a distance. Um, get to know people, get to know people's stories, and then come back. I think one of the biggest issues now in communities with police officers, and not just police officers, but public servants, is that people don't come back. So if they see your face today, they should see your face next week. And and, and you should get to know people's stories. How's work going? How's your job? How are your kids? Uh, when is their birthday? Um, when is their wedding anniversary? Those are things that you know about your family, Aaron. And those are things that police officers should know about people in the community because you want to ultimately become a part of that family. That's good stuff. Officer Tommy Norman out of Arkansas. Officer, thank you so much. We appreciate you taking the time. You want to teach me how to dance at all? Because all I know is a sprinkler. <laughs> the That's sprinkler. it, man. That's all I know. I'm still working on my dance moves. <laughs> I, I Trust me, we've seen it several times during this, uh, di- during this web stream. You trying to do, I mean, that was the Quan you were trying to do, right? Right. Well, I guess so. Yes, <laughs> it was. Hit the quan. <laughs> well, I appreciate the effort of the dance. I appreciate what you're doing there. Thank in Central you, Arkansas, I appreciate man. you. We uh, missed you here. Oh, Tommy, thank you. It's good to see you here uh, on News Nation now. We appreciate you taking the time, my friend. All right. Happy Thanksgiving. You too. And happy okay. Thanksgiving to all of you guys out there watching. Thank you so much. And as Officer Norman kind of showed us, let's just be nice to everyone we can on this Thanksgiving. Have a great afternoon.